Hi y'all, it's Andrea over at SoSpire.com and today I am here to kick off our SoSpire Serger series. If you are not familiar, a serger is a machine that you would use to cut and finish your edges as you sew. I have a Brother Lock 10 34D serger, as well as a Genome serger. And today I'm gonna to be sewing on the Brother. Out of the two machines, I think that the Brother is the easiest to thread. And so for that reason, it's my go-to when it comes to serging. Not to say that I don't like the Janome. I do, it's just rather difficult for me personally to thread. So if anyone has any tips or tricks about threading their Janomes, please let me know and I would be so grateful. So what I wanted to clarify here is you're going to have to learn how to thread your own serger. And I recognize that that is most people's greatest fear when it comes to working with a serger. But just because I teach you how to thread this brother doesn't mean that that's going to work for years, which is why I gave the example of the Janome serger that I also have. So please check out your manufacturer's YouTube channel and watch their tutorials on how to thread your machine. Other than threading your machine, you should be good to go, right? And so what I would like to do with this series is just teach you what I use the serger for and then in turn share with you some serger inspiration and so the best way i think to be inspired is to learn how to actually make something so in keeping with my teaching style we're just going to jump right into a project today and then at the end of this video you're going to know how to create something that's useful functional and pretty with your serger but before we get going on the project, I just wanted to pass along one little tip for threading your serger. And I got my serger probably, goodness, at least 10 years ago. And I remember reading on a sewing blog this little trick as to how to remember how to thread your serger. And I even remember the gal who wrote it then said, I recognize this is kind of weird. Um, no offense, but it does help it stick in your mind how to do it. And what she said is when learning how to thread the serger, you have to thread the machine in a certain order. So you go upper looper, lower looper, left thread, right thread, okay? And that's usually what people get in the wrong order. And then when the machine is not thread correctly, your chain stitch and tension is all off and it doesn't work and then you could quickly grow frustrated. So how she taught me more than a decade ago to remember how to thread the serger was this. Just as if you're crossing yourself you would go upper looper, lower looper, left, right. So that's my tip passing on that came from someone else. I have no idea who it was so long ago, but that stuck in my head. So that will make more sense to you after you watch your manufacturer's video as to how to thread the machine or reference your owner's manual. But just again, upper looper, lower looper, left, right. And the left and the right are the left needle and the right needle, okay? So I hope that is helpful to you. So again, the way the serger works is it cuts the material and sews at the same time. So 
the cutting aspect is going to be new to most of you. There are two blades inside of this searcher. So I always tell new students when they're learning how to use a regular machine, know where your hands are. You especially need to know where your hands are when you're working with a serger, all right? Because your likelihood of getting seriously injured is significantly increased with those blades in motion. So I suggest that you practice using your serger when you won't be distracted. Um, warn everyone, you're working with a dangerous machine. They should not sneak up on you or startle you. And then really stay focused. Don't try to do anything else while you're getting acquainted with your serger. And then I wanted to tell you um, one story I was visiting with my son, Zachary, who just turned 25 yesterday on the phone and he asked what I was up to and I said I was launching this serger series and I was planning for that yesterday and he said, oh yeah, that's such a great machine. Do you remember when we made all those notebook covers? You always had me sewing on that, mom. And I had completely, totally forgotten that I had actually had taught the older kids how to use this. And I did actually have them selling product that was for sale on it. Um, that's how great it is and how simple it makes some construction processes. And what he specifically referenced, I don't know that I've ever shared this with you all, but I was featured in Southern Living Magazine, and that's my product up there. It's a little list maker and notepad keeper. And so when this magazine was published, I had hundreds and hundreds of orders for those little list makers. And so I did put the kids to work. I, I don't even remember if I paid them or not <laughs> for their efforts, but they were all so excited they pitched in. And it was right about that time with that exposure that I had also moved the business out of the house and everything just really blew up in a, in a good way. And I was the busiest I'd ever been. So that brought back some fond memories. And for whatever reason, I had completely blocked that out of my head that I had even taught the kids how to use this machine. So the reason I share that with you is please don't be intimidated by your serger. It really is an awesome machine and it is worth it to learn how to use it. I've heard from many of you that your sergers are still in the closet or in the box and you just don't know what to do with it. So we are gonna fix that today. So also in keeping with Sospire tradition, I prefer to make products that serve a purpose, all right? Um, I don't like to waste material and I certainly don't like to waste my time or your time. So today we are going to be stitching up a cover for my design notebook. I know many of you probably thought I walked away from this. I did not walk away from this, um, but what is happening is this book is starting to uh, fall apart as a result of my frequent use. So this brand is Artist Loft and I got this book at Michael's and it was only like $5. So I'm gonna go ahead and repair the spine there with some packing tape. And then today I'm gonna show you how to make a fun cover for this. I have several tutorials that teach you how to create binder covers and book covers and notebook covers. This one is going to be a little different. We're going to add a fun touch to it in that we're going to incorporate a ribbon marker, which happens to be the selvage from the fabric that I'm using. So we all get our favorite pieces of selvage. There's nothing really spectacular about this selvage other than it says, so dressed up. And you'll see when I show you the fabric that I'm using. So it will be fun for you to salvage the selvage from the fabric that you choose for this project. And then again, this project really demonstrates 
the results that you can achieve with the serger. And one of the greatest benefits of using a serger is you're going to have four um, rows of thread all woven. And so that seam is really, really strong. And so for something like a book cover, you would really want a very strong seam. And that's largely the reason why they use sergers to sew clothing because it creates such a nice strong seam. And I hope that we're also going to be able, as part of this series, dabble in the clothing again. I think it's probably been about a year since we made the tunic. And I would like to see if we could design and sew a t-shirt. No promises, but that's my hope so we can play with some of the awesome knits that are out there on the market. So enough chitty chatting. We're going to get sewing on the serger. I'm just going to readjust here with the camera and then I will give you a look at the serger and we're, we're going to jump right in so you can see how it works. Okay, so I hope this is a good angle for you. So you can see you can lift that presser foot up and down. And then I'm not certain that you can see it, but on the other side of this guard is the blade. And so when you start sewing, you're gonna wanna use your hand wheel to turn that blade so it's in the full up position, all right? So I'm assuming again that you have your serger threaded and your tension should be right there at that midpoint. I like to keep mine right at about five, between five and four, and that seems to work really good. I want to encourage you to reference your owner's manual on that. So for this project, you're going to need to measure your sketchbook when it's open and laying flat and to that measurement you're going to add two and a quarter inches and then you're going to need to measure the height of that and to that you're going to add one inch so for that sketchbook that i have by artist loth my interior and exterior panels are cut 12 and a quarter inches high by 20 inches long. And here is a peek at this fun fabric. This was a gift to me from a Sospire patron. We had a holiday gift exchange and I've been saving this for something special. And that day has arrived. So I'm always grateful when you all send me fabric and I try to use it for a special projects so I can think of you when I use that project. And so you're going to have two of those body panels and one of them will be backed with quilt batting and that one will go on the table first with the batting and then the fabric. And then you're going to have two pocket panels which also measure 12 and a quarter by 12 and a quarter and you're going to fold those in half and then position one pocket on each side of your padded panel there and make sure you like how your fabric lines up i had two ladies too close to each other so I'm just going to flip that over. So the raw edges of the pockets are towards the outer edge of that padded panel and then the folded edge is toward the inside and this is where the front and back cover of your sketchbook will slip in. Then you're going to take your selvage and you're going to position that just slightly off center to the left. So this panel is 20 inches wide. So I'm just gonna bump that over to about 11 inches. And the reason that I'm doing that is because the spine's gonna hit at center. And so I want to be able to get full range of use from this page marker. So my 
page marker or salvage is the exact height of this panel, which then is gonna put me at risk for sewing that into the bottom seam. And I don't want that to happen. So I'm just going to fold up that salvage page marker just a bit and then pin that in place. So I have the top of that page marker at the top of this padded panel, slightly off center to the left, and be very mindful where you're positioning your pins because you absolutely cannot sew through pins with a serger. So I have that top pin at least two inches from the top of that. So there is no chance that I will be nicking that with the serger blade. So just to review, padded body panel, page marker, pockets, and then the remaining body panel is unlined. This is just high quality quote weight cotton, and it's gonna go right sides facing on top of that panel. So this is like a sandwich we're making here. And I liken this to like your in the hoop projects with your embroidery machines, because we're just going to make four seams and this project is done. We're not even gonna need a pair of scissors other than to just break the thread if you don't have an auto thread cutter. So I use the rotary blade to cut out the project. I'm gonna use the serger to finally finish it. And then one snip with my scissors. So this is what I have right here. And I've just secured this sandwich with four pins. Again, set in at least two inches from the outer edge. And I'm going to now take this project over to the serger and sew around the two long edges and one of the short edges. Okay, so my serger has a foot pedal and as far as I know, they all have foot pedals. So just when you're starting out, go very slow and I'm gonna begin down that long edge and the seam allowances are not clearly marked or they're they're marked but they are difficult to see and to follow so what i do with the serger is just align my fabric with the right hand edge of that silver strike plate there and i just keep my eye right there on the edge and it seems to work out very good for me so you want to start off with your long tail that is left over from when you tested your stitch and I just move that towards the back and then I lay the fabric up on that deck and what you're seeing here is the top short edge so I'm going to sew this first long edge on this side and then I'm going to move the camera over so you can see what it looks like to sew down that short edge and the opposite long edge. So I have this, you'll notice, set to five, which is just a standard stitch length there. Anything in bold on your machine is going to be your standard. I have it set at three, and then back here, I have that set at one. So depending upon what model you have, Set everything to the bold and you should be just fine for this particular project. There are lots of other things you can do with the serger and we will try to explore as many of those options as possible. But for this first project, we wanna keep it very simple, very functional. And so all settings to standard on your machine. So I've got my edge of my fabric aligned. I'm gonna lift up that foot and then slide that fabric in until it stops against that blade. And then I'm just gonna give it a little bit of gas. And I have
have brand new blades in this, so it is moving through this fabric and batting sandwich, no problem. When I come around to the other side, you'll see what that looks like. I just kept my foot on the gas pedal there and here is my long tail and then I do not have an automatic thread cutter so I do have to use scissors to cut mine and in this case you can cut it within about an inch of your material there because all of these are going to be interior seams, so we're good. We don't have to worry about finishing that and weaving it back in. And then I have my, my long tail to start up with the short seam, but I want to reposition you so you can see what it looks like on this end. Okay, so I got Isabel to help me here, and she is holding the camera, so forgive us if there's any shakiness. I don't have a tripod for the iPad yet. So she's just going to hold this so you all can see how this works. So I have stitched all the way down the long edge of this and it cut as I sewed. It's very nice, clean, wonderful stitch. And now with Isabel holding that, I'm going to show you how this machine works from the front. So I just lift up that foot pedal and then position the fabric underneath of there. And then as I start sewing, I'm gonna ask Isabel to get in a little closer to that blade so you can see how this functions. Just ran that right off the edge and I'll cut that about an inch from the project. Thank you so much Isabel. Okay so now we have a long side and a short side stitched up and again I just love this so much because it's so tidy there are no stray threads right? It looks awesome. Now we need to stitch down the remaining long edge and so same thing, you're just going to get that blade into its highest position so the needles are up. Lift up that foot pedal and then go ahead and start sewing. stitched up two long sides and one short side. I'm going to remove those pins on the exterior and the interior. And then I'm going to turn that right side out. Poke out those corners really good. The serger also gives you really nice clean corners because it trims that fabric so nice for you. And then it will 
give you a really strong seam for our ribbon salvage page marker. And so once you have your project turned right side out, this should be what it looks like. So you have the two pockets and then your ribbon trim, which should have avoided that bottom seam, but now it's still long enough to actually mark your pages for you. And then what you're going to do is flip this pocket on the open end over to the opposite side. So on this front side, now you just have one pocket and then pull that fabric nice and taut with your fingers and serge that open end shut. Now with the serger, the downside is there is no removing the seam, like the seam ripper is not going to be of service. So you have to make sure that you have all your layers nice and flat because the only way out of a serge seam is to cut it. And in this case, your project will then be too small. So take the time to make sure everything is laying nice and flat and then go ahead and stitch across that to close and finish that open edge. Make sure the needle is up, the blade is up. Have a little bit longer tail on this end because that's where we started so I'm just going to trim that also down to about an inch and this should be plenty of thread that you don't have to worry about it coming undone but if you are worried just simply knot that and you will be fine okay so now you have this surged edge and you're just going to flip that pocket back around to hide that surged edge. And you should have a beautifully finished, very durable sketchbook cover. I will reposition the camera and fit this so you all can see if it is in fact a nice fit. So with the end of this ribbon marker here, it's starting to fray. So you could either knot it or finish that off with a little pinch of glue, just fold up that edge and then put a little dot of glue in there and you'll have that finish. I would suggest adding a bead, except if you do that, then when you close your book, it is going to leave a bump on that page. So I like the idea of just folding it over and popping a little dab of glue in there and letting that be nice and flush. So just going to bring over my sketchbook here and do a little test fit. It looks really good. So how this works is you take that front cover and you slide that inside of the left hand slip pocket and this is designed to be a snug fit it's literally a perfect fit and you just slide that on there and then you'll turn it over to the opposite side and you're going to have to invert the spine a little bit like that and then same thing get that cover in that opposite pocket and then once you have that in there you can slide that up and just straighten it out nice and neat and those corners are just fabulous so this technique on the serger gives you the nicest cleanest strongest best fitting book cover possible and then I have 
my adorable salvage ribbon page mark making this completely custom for me and you can see the sketchbook is filling up i will set aside time soon to create a look through the design book and that's how the page marker sits in there and you can see the benefit of staggering that now to the left awesome right so I hope you all enjoyed that project. I am super satisfied with my new sketchbook cover and it just makes it so much more fun and it's even more special because the fabric was a gift and let's just face it, this fabric is absolutely fabulous. So I hope you're totally inspired to get your serger off the shelf, out of the closet, out of the box and on your sewing table. You're gonna to wanna to choose a nice, sturdy surface to work on. The serger does vibrate quite a bit, so you want to have a really nice, sturdy table. If you do not have a sturdy table, perhaps you can borrow the kitchen counter to make your first project so that you have success and do not get frustrated. I'm really excited to hear what you think of one, the project and this clever salvage ribbon tie page marker. And two, if you think you might actually enjoy having a serger. So I will be back next Tuesday with another project centered around the serger. Between now and then, please do share photos of your serger on the SoSpire Facebook group page. I'll put links to everything down below for you so that we can see who has what model and let us know why you like it. And then of course, share pictures of your projects with us as well. So until then, as always, please know the creative genius in me will be celebrating the creative genius in you. Have a beautiful week, everyone.